Greetings to all intellectuals. Today we are in IRIH and we are looking on a condition postpartum hemorrhage. Postpartum hemorrhage, this is the blood or an hemorrhage or car after delivery. It is a blood loss greater than 500 mils of blood following the caesarean section. We are now looking on the classification of postpartum hemorrhage. Under the classification of postpartum hemorrhage, we have primary postpartum hemorrhage and secondary postpartum hemorrhage. On primary postpartum hemorrhage, this is the blood loss estimated to be greater than 500 ml from the genital tract within 24 hours of delivery. Causes of primary postpartum hemorrhage are categorized in four T's. The first T is atony or tone. This is the inability of the uterus to contract during delivery. The second T stands for trauma. Trauma, this is due to tearing of a tissue and the blood vessel on a genital tract during delivery. Trauma can also occur due to precipitate labor, big baby, or unskilled health personnel. The third T stands for tissue. Tissue occur due to retained placenta memory and the blood clot. This can cause irritation to the walls of the uterus. After this, it will result into breeding. The fourth T stands for thrombin or coaguropathy. This is due to breeding disorder which occur due to clotting failure, anemia or leaf D. We are now looking on a second class of postpartum hemorrhage which is secondary postpartum hemorrhage. Secondary postpartum hemorrhage, it is an abnormal breeding from the genital tract occurs after 24 hours of delivery until 6 weeks of postpartum. Secondary postpartum hemorrhage can occur due to some maternal condition. This condition such as preeclampsia, hypertension, diabetes. Let us now look on some of the risk factors of postpartum hemorrhage. Pregnancy related such as antepartum hemorrhage, current pregnancy, multiple pregnancy resulted from uterine atom due to large placenta site, preeclampsia, pregnancy-induced hypertension, previous history of postpartum hemorrhage, maternal obesity due to poor uterine tonicity, delivery-related caesarean section due to poor regression. Let us now look on some signs and symptoms of PPH. We have vaginal bridging, which is due to the uterus genital tract rupture of blood vessel. We have falling of blood pressure due to the imbalance of electrolyte. We have also less pulse rate due to the impaired blood circulation. We have also cold cream skin with a low temperature due to the disturbance in femoral regulation. We have also altered level of consciousness due to the lower energy and blood supply to the brain. Management of PPH, diagnosis, history. History taken, it will show the time of labor, duration, press and the finally placenta delivery. Physical examination. A quick physical examination from the head to toe in order to exclude pala and asaka which is generalized edema. Also, we can do speculum vaginal examination which will review trauma to the genital tract. We can also do FBC and cross-matching, which will determine hemoglobin level, blood group, and preparation for BT. We can also do ECG, done to know the conduction of the cardiac mass. Complication of PPH, shock. Shock due to severe hemorrhage or blood loss. Sepsis due to excessive manipulation in the retained placenta. Anemia due to blood loss, specifically late blood cell via an hemorrhage. Lenal failure due to blockage or reduced blood supply to the kidney. Shahan syndrome, pituitary necrosis due to reduced blood supply to the pituitary gland. PPH is an obstetric emergence condition which requires immediate care. And under immediate care, I came up with some intervention or aims that we can take before going to the actual care. And these are, first, you stop the breeding. Second, you resuscitate the mother. The third one, you prevent the complication of the condition. And after looking on this intervention, you can now go into the general nursing care. I am grateful for being awarded this opportunity to present this condition to you. Thank you very much.